Tonight, Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris will face off in their only debate before Election Day. Let's bring in our special panel, University of Maryland lecturer Dr. Jason Nichols, First Amendment attorney Shelby Emmett, Sinclair political commentator Amisha Cross, and member of the President's National Security Education Board, host of America First on Salem Radio, and Sinclair media contributor Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Let's start with the, 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 the newbie to the panel this week. Uh, Shelby, what are you looking for? What do you, what do you think? I mean, clearly COVID is going to be the topic du jour, but what are you looking for between these two? What, what's, your, what's, your, what's your really number one topic that you want to hear? Um, I definitely want to see some civility uh, for sure, but I want to hear more about their positions moving forward on free speech issues. We've had a couple executive orders from the administration around campus speech specifically, and Harris does not have that great of a record on association issues on the First Amendment. Um, I'm just interested to hear more about how they plan on protecting these liberties, but also just conducting themselves like adults because their behavior absolutely does have an impact on the rest of the nation. And it can't be much worse than what it was for the first round. And Jason, I'm, I'm guessing it won't be any worse, but probably a lot more civil um, between uh, these two versus the, the front runner, the uh, presidential top of the ticket. Um, some would say that there's a chance that either one of these two could end up being a president if, if, if uh, elected, their tickets elected, you know, two, three, four years down the road. Yeah, no, I think that's that's very right. And this is probably the most consequential vice presidential debate that we've ever seen. Uh, we have two men who are running for president, uh, both, you know, uh, debatably have some some health issues. We know that uh, Donald Trump is is 74. He's uh, obese. So, you know, anything could happen. Of course, we know that Joe Biden is 78, I believe. Uh, and he also, uh, you know, is is an older gentleman. So this is a really important debate. Uh, and I think you're gonna see a lot more civility. I actually think that this could be a good day for Republicans. This will be the best probably debate that they will have of the four that we will see because of the fact that I believe that Pence is guided by uh, Judeo-Christian evangelical morals. I think he's not irascible and crass like the president. And I think that he could actually reach some of those uh, undecided, voters, particularly women in the suburbs. He can make a lot of what the president says and stands for a lot more digestible. So I think it's important for Kamala Harris to be uh, effectively aggressive, but also be very empathetic, not necessarily speak directly to Mike Pence all the right. time, but speak right. directly to the American people. All right, what do you say, Sebastian? What's the, what, what's the go-to here if you're, if you're Team Trump and, and Pence? What are, you, what are you trying to get out of this debate? Well, I, I think compared to the first one, hopefully the, the Democrat candidate won't tell her jousting partner to shut up, call them a liar or a, a clown, because if there's anybody who's irascible, it was Joe Biden. I think it's going to be tough for Kamala Harris. Why? She utterly failed amongst the Democrat candidates. She had to drop out almost first because she was incredibly unpopular. No Democrats wanted her to be the presidential nominee. And also, Eric, she hasn't debated a Republican. She's debated, debated uh, fellow Democrats and lost and had to drop out. So this is when she's going up against an incredibly steady, an incredibly measured politician, a former governor, a vice president, who is the head of the coronavirus task force. So I don't envy her because uh, I'll tell you something, Mike Pence is a past master and he's not gonna fall into any trap of insults like Biden tried on the president. Amisha, what, which Kamala Harris do you think we'll see? Will, will we see the one who is on Senate Judiciary giving Brett Kavanaugh a very, very rough go? Or as Saturday Night Live would call her Mamala Harris and maybe reach out and try and get that, that suburban, I don't know, female family vote? That's a good question. I think that we're going to see a little bit of both. What Kamala Harris knows going into this debate is that she has a couple of things that she has to do. She isn't debating Donald Trump. So bringing that type of utter fire to a Mike Pence who does not debate in the same way that Donald Trump does would be a mistake. 
we know that during all the prep and all of the uh, all the work she's done over the past few weeks, she's actually been her sparring partner in those prep debates has been former Mayor Pete Buttigieg. And I think that what she's going to do is lean in on policy. This is going to be a policy discussion. Pence is a policy wonk himself. She's going to talk to those suburban voters. She's going to speak directly to women. She's going to talk about race, the elephant in the room that we saw Donald Trump try to run away from when he refused to denounce white supremacists. Right. We're going to see her also lean in on what it means to actually watch a Supreme Court justice come in to totally strip away the ACA with the backdrop of a pandemic. I think that what we're going to see from Kamala Harris is proof positive that she understands policy and that she's ready for this job on day one. All right, here's the task. We have 20 seconds each. We're going to take it around the horn. We'll start with uh, Shelby. Your thoughts? What, you got 20 seconds. What do you want to hear? Uh, what will clarify some situation with the left, Kamala Harris, if, if you hear it? Um, I think she really will have to focus on how do you balance law and order as a former prosecutor with the civil unrest that you're seeing now. There's a lot of constitutional questions at play there. When do you use federal authority? What is the expectation of your local government? What type of forces, uh, whether financial or otherwise, are you going to use to hold people accountable at your state and local level? And she has to, I think, make a very strong case for where she'll be on criminal justice reform. Okay. Mind you, that was a big issue, yet no one in Congress has done anything with Senator Scott. Let's Bell. keep it at the time. Uh, Jason, you got 20 seconds. What about uh, Pence? Yeah. So um, I, I think, well, with uh, Pence, I think he needs to illustrate why Donald Trump is, is the man for the job, particularly with bringing an economy back. We know that uh, it's been slowed a little bit in the last month uh, um, in terms of our comeback economically. Uh, we know that Joe Biden actually led an economic com comeback and, and put us on the right path right. as a nation right. economically. So I think that that's going to be a big issue uh, that I think Mike Pence is going to have to highlight why their, okay. their side is the right Sebastian, side for that. Sebastian, 20 seconds. You're on the clock. Did, did Jason just say Biden led an economic comeback? He led an economic comeback for his family as one of the most corrupt politicians in American history. I have one, one suggestion for the vice president. He has to force Kamala Harris to denounce the violence of Antifa and Black Lives Matter that have taken the lives of right. 330 Americans in the last five months. She needs to distance okay. herself from the radical base of the Democrats, and um, she won't. Amisha, uh, you're 20 seconds. Well, we know that the majority of the Black Lives Matter and George Floyd protests were not violent at all. That's over 94 percent. That is definitely a fact. And Kamala Harris has also denounced any types of violence following those events that has occurred sporadically. What she has to do tonight and what I think she will do is make the argument for uh, what her criminal justice reformist record looks like now, what does it look like in right. the Senate and what it will look like going forward into 2020 and beyond. Okay, panel, thank you very much.